In my last video, I explained how it's possible to see the shadows cast by blood vessels inside your eye. If you haven't seen that already, I recommend you go watch it now, so you know what I'm talking about in this one. This time I'd like to delve a little bit deeper into the phenomenon and the nature of the shadows themselves. In particular, I'm going to show you how to see individual white blood cells inside your eye. First of all, let's talk about what your blood is made of. About 45% of your blood by volume is made up of red blood cells. You've probably heard of them. They're kind of donut-shaped with filled centers, and they're responsible for carrying oxygen around your body. Another 1% of your blood is made of white blood cells, which there are various types of, but in general they're kind of like spiky little balls. And they're basically the police force and garbage bin of your bloodstream. They target and destroy bacteria, fungus, any parasites they run into, and they also clean debris out of your bloodstream to keep things running smoothly. Another roughly 1% is platelets, which are essentially little tiny fragments of cells, which play an important role in helping your blood clot when you have a wound so you don't bleed to death. The other 53% of your blood is made up of plasma, which is just a yellowish fluid which everything else floats in. So on a large scale, when you mix all these elements together, you get a substance which is generally red, because there's so many red blood cells they tend to dominate the color. Inside the retina though, the blood vessels get so narrow that your blood cells have to go one by one, single file, through them. At this level, the differences in the way that these different components absorb and reflect light become important factors for how they create shadows. So what do we mean when we say that red blood cells are red? It basically means that they absorb blue light and they scatter red light. So you see the red light that's scattering back to your eye and the blue light never comes back. So this means that if you shine blue light on some red blood cells, it will create a nice dark shadow. But it turns out that white blood cells are more or less transparent to blue light. They don't absorb it as well. And so if you shine blue light on them, it'll just go right through. So what this means for your retina is that you have this procession of blood cells and remember that white blood cells are only about 1% by volume. So but when they occasionally do come through, they're basically like a little window for the blue light to go through. They cast a spot of blue light down on the retina, where the shadow usually is. And the area on the retina that is below these blood vessels is used to being dark. It's adapted, like I said in the last video. And so you can kind of think of it as compensating. Everything it sees, it's brightening up a little bit so that everything turns out normal despite the shadow. So every time one of these white blood cells passes and casts a little spot of regular light on it, that part of the retina thinks it must be something super bright, and you get a very bright, tiny point of light passing along the wiggly lines described by these vessels. So the theory goes, if you can shine blue light into your eye, you'll see these little tiny dots moving around, which are actually caused by your white blood cells moving through capillaries. So where can you get a source of blue light like this to stimulate your eye? The cool part is, it turns out that the light from our atmosphere, the sky, is close enough to the ideal color that if you look up into it, you will see these little tiny points of light. This is called the blue field entoptic phenomenon. Blue field because it's blue light, blue light field, and entoptic because it comes from within your eye. It's something that you're seeing which is caused by the internal structure of your eye. Same thing as the last video. So basically all you need to do is go outside on a nice sunny day and look up at the sky, and eventually you'll see these little tiny dots moving around. But I have to warn you, this is much more subtle than the previous effect I described. It will take a while to see it, so don't get disappointed too quickly. Basically, you're going to have to look and kind of zone out and just watch for these little sparkles. And they're almost so bright that it seems like they couldn't be something that you're seeing. They seem like just noise or static. But if you watch closely, you'll see that they follow the same path. So you might see a certain squiggle for a second, and then a few moments later, another little dot will follow the same path. And this is really what distinguishes them from floaters or visual static or anything else in your visual field that you might be seeing. These lights will be fast moving, they'll follow consistent paths, and they'll all be moving basically the same speed and look about the same. What's really fascinating about this effect is how tiny white blood cells are. They average about 10 micrometers wide. To put that into perspective, it's one-tenth the width of a human hair. It's also about the size of a droplet of water you'd expect to find in fog. The point is, they're four times smaller than anything you could expect a human eye to resolve. So there's no way we would ever be able to see them naturally under any circumstances, except when they wander into our eye in the course of their work, and they're projected into the sky by the blue light that our atmosphere happens to shine down on us. 